The Holy Gospel for this day is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, beginning with verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a, like a whole bunch of pictures of people up there. I, I, I went on my Facebook account and I talked to a whole bunch of my pastor friends, and I said, can you send me pictures of yourself? One where you're kind of looking mean or frowning or scowling, and another one where you're looking happy. And so we've got all of these pictures up there, and they're great pictures. I mean, I even have one of the Bishop of Northwest Minnesota sent it. He's, he, he even sent me pictures. I got, uh, I got friends of mine from Nebraska and Colorado and everywhere, and, and I was going to show you these pictures of them frowning and, and looking mean. Actually, I've got a friend from Florida that, uh, that he, he looks pretty scary. And the question is, you see all of these people, you see these pictures, and what can you tell me about them? What can you tell me about those people? By looking at a person from the outside, what can you really tell me about them? Anything? Can you tell me whether they're a good person? Or a bad person? One thing I can tell you about all of them is they're all sinners, and they all know it. I even had uh, one uh, Facebook friend uh, who is from Madagascar. And uh, she was the uh, uh, leader of the uh, women's organization of the church in Madagascar. And she sent me pictures to, to use. So what can you tell about a person from the outside? Just by looking at them. Or maybe you even have a little more information. Maybe you experience them in, in a certain moment in time. Maybe you experience them at a high point. And if we see somebody at a high point in their life when they're, when they're happy and, and joyful, 
Um, you know, we, we tend to think that, that they're a happy, joyful person. But what if we happen to encounter them at a low point? At a low point in their day or in their life. And we have no idea. We have no idea what they've experienced that day. <laughs> Driving. <laughs> Driving. You ever, you ever ride down the street and you see somebody who's just acting crazy? I mean, just, you know, sometimes... I, there's a reason for road rage. <laughs> there, there is. It's not justified, but, but there's a reason for road rage because some people just... Oh, there you go. Excellent. We're getting some of my pictures up. Good. Come on. Can you get them? Oh, go. Okay, there you go. So, go to the next one. Oh, back. That's my friend Steve from Florida. He said, "I hope it, I hope this one's not too scary for you." So, um, go ahead and keep going through them. Just click through them. Yeah. Keep going. She's not too happy with it. Anybody recognize her? Patty. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's the Bishop of Northwest Minnesota. That's Elizabeth Eaton. She's our, our Bishop of the Holy LCA. Keep going. That's Mark Anderson. He gave me a picture. Uh, uh, Judy's the pastor up in Northwood. That's my friend from Adams, Nebraska. <laughs> and Barb. So what, you look at those pictures and what can you tell from them? Not much. Looking from the outside. And we tend to judge people based on only a small amount of information that we know about them. So go ahead on to the, keep, keep going forward, because uh, I had them all send me, or I, I got two pictures of each person, so, um, so keep going. But what, what is the job of a judge? What is the job of a judge? To determine guilt or innocence, Right? And to sentence people, uh, Samuel Penny at his graduation. There's not so scary, Steve. Um, a judge is, is a judge's job is to um, to determine uh, guilt or innocence to take the facts, all of the facts, weigh all of the information, and make a determination. The problem is, too often, we don't know all the facts. Too often, all we know is just a little bit, a little bit of what we've experienced. And so, we pass judgment on others. Maybe our judgment is based on, on that, that good uh, high point in, in their life or in their day. And maybe that judgment is, is made on just a, a, a small snippet or, or bit of information when we experience that person at a low point in their life or their day. One of the people that I asked for, for pictures, I, I sent out messages to my Facebook friends, and one of the people refused. No, I'm not going to do that. 
But she explained that the reason was that she was at her dad's funeral. Yeah. So we don't always know what is going on in, in, inside a person or what is motivating them or what is causing them to do what they do. But we pass judgment upon them anyway. Jesus, in the Gospel lesson for today, um, in his encounter with Peter, tells this parable. And, and in this parable, Jesus uses uh, uh, two um, units of, of, of monetary measure, a talent and a denarius. Now, one talent is equal to 6,000 denarii. Okay? Okay? 6,000 denarii. So when the one slave owes 100 talents, it's the equivalent of 60 million denarii. I said that wrong. He owes 100 denarii. The other guy owes 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents is the equivalent of 60 million denarii. And a denarius is one day's wage. Okay? So, do the math. Do the math. The Lord has forgiven the man 60 million days' wages. I mean, that's a ludicrous amount, isn't it? I mean, that's just a ludicrous number. How could anybody possibly owe that much? But that's, that's what we owe God. That is the, the extent of our debt to God. It's the equivalent of 60 million days' wages. Just think of that. So, when we stand in judgment of our brothers or sisters, we stand on some pretty unsolid ground. Jesus paid for our debt on the cross with his blood. We are forgiven because of God's grace and mercy for us. God's idea of justice is mercy. Our idea of justice too often, too often is condemnation. You know, the funny thing about us is, you know, when, when I do something wrong, I, you know, I may acknowledge that it was wrong, it was a bad thing, or that I sinned against God, but, but I, usually, I can usually justify it. I can usually diminish my own sin because, you know, gee, I, I wasn't feeling good that day. That's why I, I exploded in anger at my friend, who, and I really didn't mean it, so it really wasn't that big a deal. But on the other, on the other side... My friend is, wow, what a jerk. And he calls himself a pastor? He thinks he's a Christian? Holy smokes. We, we are so good at justifying our own mistakes and our own sin. We diminish them. We, we reduce them. And, and we come up with all kinds of excuses. You know, I stubbed my toe this morning, and it was really hurting, so that's why I did that awful thing. So, and of course, God will forgive me, because God knows that, right? Because I deserve God's forgiveness. But do we then turn around and show that same 
graciousness and compassion for our neighbor. In the gospel lesson, it says that uh, the Lord, when, when uh, the, the servant, the slave, asked to be forgiven, it says that he had pity on him. Now, we don't like that word pity, do we? Uh, don't pity me. That's, that's what we hear all the time. We don't want somebody to pity us. But what pity really means is that the Lord looked at him and loved him and had compassion on him and so decided, made the determination, made the decision to be merciful. That's what that word pity means. It's not a feeling sorry for somebody because, well, you know, there's, I'm superior to you. It's a sense of compassion. Compassion because of the situation the slave found himself in. And so the Lord looked at the, at the slave and the slave pleaded, pleaded with him. And what was his plea? Please give me enough time and I will pay you back everything. Yeah, right. 60 million days wages? Really? He's going to pay him back everything? I don't think so. God treats us with compassion and mercy. And then God turns around and says, as I have shown mercy to you, you are to show mercy to your brother and sister or sister who sins against you. Because you don't know. You can't see into their heart. You, you don't know what they have gone through. You don't know the steps that they have walked in life. You don't know the path that they have trod. You don't know the difficulties and the struggles and trials that they've experienced. A friend of mine uh, said the other day that, that his new mantra whenever he sees somebody doing something and it, it gets his ire up, he just tells himself, well, I'm sure they're doing the best they can. I'm sure they're doing the best they can. Because in reality, that's what each of us does every day. We do the best we can. And some days we succeed and some days we fail monumentally. But thanks be to God that each and every day God looks upon us with compassion and love and judges us with mercy. Let us be disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us be the kind of people who walk in the footsteps of Christ. And let us then in turn Look upon our brothers and sisters and look upon them with mercy and compassion because we don't know, we don't know the whole story. But the story that we do know is that Jesus Christ died for them on the cross that they might know the mercy and love and forgiveness of God. Let us be bearers of mercy and love and forgiveness in this world. Amen.